Welcome to our Maundy Thursday service here at First CP Church in Olive Branch. So glad that you could be with us, some in person and some watching online. It is an honor to celebrate this uh, somber occasion as we conclude our march to Jerusalem with Jesus and our march to the cross. Um, A long time ago, Jesus and his best friends got together for a meal. And Jesus invited them to this meal the night before he was to be taken to Golgotha and executed on the cross. Jesus invited them to this meal knowing that not one day later he would be turned over to the authorities and tried in an unjust trial and put to death. He invited them to this meal knowing that one of the disciples would be the one to turn him in. And yet, he still held a meal for them and invited them to dine as brothers and sisters at the same table together. Friends, even though we, like the disciples, like Judas, oftentimes betray our own Lord and Savior, Jesus. Our Jesus welcomes us to the table all the same. And tonight, on this night, we celebrate that meal, including all of the pain that comes with it, in hopes that we can learn and grow from our own mistakes and be changed by the grace of Jesus who welcomes us anyway. And so, friends, let us begin the end of our journey to the cross on this Maundy Thursday evening. I want to invite you to join me in our call to worship, which is responsive. The words will be uh, on the screens here and on your screen at home. I'll say the first parts and then your part will follow. You will respond. Gracious God, when the time was right, you sent Jesus to be among us, born into human life, seeing your grace revealed in all things. He laughed with those who laughed and mourned with those who mourned. We have been told that on the night before he was taken to be tortured to a death on a cross, Jesus sat with his disciples and ate with them a meal of remembrance. Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is me, my body given for you. Each time you eat it, remember me. Take this, all of you, and drink it. This is me. This is my promise in my life's blood poured out for you and for the world. Friends, I want to invite you to join us for our first hymn this evening as we will celebrate this meal of Holy Communion. And by the way, this is a good time to remind you if you're worshiping with us at home, we are going to Uh, have communion here in a little bit. So if you want to gather together some elements that you can use, uh, bread, crackers, chips, some kind of vessel and some kind of juice or, or liquid to drink to be vessels for the body and blood of Jesus, we will do that uh, here in a few minutes. But before we do, I want to invite you to join us in our hymn, Let Us Break Bread Together.
get together on our knees. Let us break bread together. As we continue this journey to the cross, the season of Lent that is close to its completion, we are reminded of our brokenness and our sinfulness and the call of God to repent of that. So friends, I want to invite you to join me in prayer as we pray in unison our prayer of confession. The words should be printed up on your screen. Friends, let us pray. Lord Jesus... On this holy night, leading us into tomorrow's Good Friday, we remember with both sorrow and gratitude the agony and the shame, the darkness and desolation you endured on Calvary for us and for the redemption of all people. As we meet under the shadow of the cross, to taste again this meal of remembrance, we ask you to help us understand something more of what it cost you, Holy One, to bear away our sin, that we may love and serve you better, our Savior and most merciful Redeemer, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Friend, in his letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul wrote the following words. He says, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, let us rejoice that by the power of our Lord Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Amen. Our Lord Jesus gathered together with his friends for a meal. Knowing what would come next, he still welcomed them into his presence and hosted them 
at his table where all are equal and where all are welcome. On this night, when we remember that night, we too gather together, even in strange and unconventional ways, but we gather together in the power of the Holy Spirit to remember the love that Jesus had for us, the love to welcome us even knowing what would happen to him, the love that drove him to a cross where he would die out of his love for us. So friends, in this time, let's prepare our elements. If you're here in person and you did not get a a communion cup, let us know and we'll get one to you. And those of you who are at home, if you are ready with your elements now, at this table... And of course, in this place that extends beyond the physical table into our homes and through our devices and our screens, where we represent the table of God and the table of Jesus Christ, know that whosoever will may come into the presence of Jesus. On the night that Jesus was arrested, he gathered together with his friends. And during the meal, he took the bread that they were eating. And after giving thanks for it, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, friends, this is my body, broken for you. Take and eat, all of you. And every time you do, remember me. And in the same way, after the meal, Jesus took the cup. He said, friends, this is the cup of the new covenant shed for the forgiveness of sin, sealed in my blood. Take and drink of it, all of you. And every time you do, remember me. That every time we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, you call us to follow you even into dark and scary and dangerous places. And God, we pour out our thanks and our praise before you that along that journey is a table where you welcome us and all who love you and want to seek you and want to follow you. God, we pray as we approach this table today that we would take part in the breaking of your body that you experienced for us, in the shedding of your blood that you experienced for us. Almighty God, move through these elements. Pour your spirit out on all of this bread all of this juice, that it may be a vessel for your spirit to move through us, to convict us, to challenge us, to break us as you were broken. And help us to respond, O God, to the brokenness that you experienced with a new dedication and commitment to following your way wherever it may lead. God, we are so thankful for your love for us that knows no ends. We are so thankful for your love for us that even we in our anger and our violence and our hatred cannot snuff out. So use us and use this time to reach us. Almighty God, we ask these things in the name of Jesus, our Redeemer, our Lord, and our Savior. Amen. Friends, we, have, uh, we will have a lovely piece of music from our musicians. So whenever you are ready, consume your elements. Take time to pray and reflect on the work that Jesus did on the cross, of the brokenness that Jesus experienced for us, and how we are called to share in that brokenness. As Jesus loved us, let us love Jesus as well. Friends, all is now ready. Let us eat.
Will you pray with me? Almighty God, in this time as we experience the darkness of Thursday and Friday, we pray that you would allow us to be broken to the world that you were broken to. We pray that you would help us to suffer with those who suffered just as you suffered with us. And God, we pray that you would send us out into your world of brokenness, acknowledging and accepting our brokenness and reaching out just as you did to those in need. God, we thank you for this table, for this meal that you set before us. And we pray that through it you would help us to be changed. Almighty God, we love you. We are so thankful for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Friends, I want to invite you now to join us as we sing another hymn, the first three verses of Were You There When They Crucified My Lord? Friends, let us listen to the Word of God and hear the story of this night as it played out for the disciples. We'll be reading from Mark's Gospel. First, I'm going to read Mark chapter 14, verses 32 through 50. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba. Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial, The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. 
He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. And they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. And now from Mark chapter 14. Verses 66 through 72, we will share in the deep brokenness of one disciple in particular. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. And finally, from Mark chapter 15, verses 21 through 38, the story of our Jesus on the cross. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. 
And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Friends, to conclude this time together, let us ask the question, what wondrous love is this? We're going to sing our final hymn, and afterwards we will depart in silence. There will be no postlude. So sit as long as you'd like, and when you're ready, you may leave. So friends, let us sing one more song together. And from